August 13th Water Committee meeting. And we'll start off with the recognition that we're on the unceded territories of the Comox First Nation and move right into the management report. And do we have any questions on the management report? I don't see any. All those in favor of receipt? And that's unanimous. We'll move on to letter D, bulk water standpipe upgrades. And I'll, thank you. Perfect, and I'm going to send it over to staff. Thank you very much, uh, Chair and Directors. I introduce you to Chris LaRose, who will provide a summary of the report and recommendation and answer any of your questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Through the CAO, uh, through the Chair. Um, pro pro provided a, a very uh, simple uh, PowerPoint just to help me uh, walk through this report on your agenda. So the standpipe located next to the farmer's market. Here, um, so the farmers market parking is here. Farmers market uh, proper is over here. This is the Vanier Drive. So this standpipe uh, provides uh, bulk water uh, to rural residents and businesses, for the most part, in the municipalities that require large volumes of water for um, uh, watering down construction sites, filling pools, uh, that type of thing. Um, so the city of Courtney identified uh, concern with the uh, backflow prevention, so the, the protection between the um, tankers that fill and the, the water system uh, was not quite up to, to par. Um, so we um, initiated a process to look for um, uh, or kind of develop a concept for upgrades to this infrastructure. Uh, partly to resolve that concern uh, by the city, but also to um, resolve, kind of, or, I guess, uh, modernize the, the system, which right now is largely based on the honor system. There's a key for the standpipe. Um, there's a meter um, that the city and the regional district monitor, um, but the trucks self-report the amount of water that's sold. Um, so we're looking to resolve the, um, the safety concern identified by the city and uh, move to a point of sale uh, keypad type fob, fob system that would have a very accurate accounting and billing for the water used. Um, so these improvements will come along with a price tag. So here's a just a, a, a concept drawing of the of the new kiosk that's being proposed. Uh, that would go um, at some po point in that roundabout. Uh, it would have a second. Um, uh, uh, standpipe to allow for a filling of two trucks at a time. All of the proper backflow, double uh, backflow preventers with the uh, uh, pressure relief um, um, and uh, it would be above ground. And then this is the key fob at the front uh, that would uh, move us away from the uh, honor system. I know you just started, but we do have a yep. question from Director Hamir. Sure. If you'd like to ask. Yep. I don't mind taking a field any question right now. No, no problem. Um, so the question was, um, Apart from pools and construction, um, do you have any idea how many of the users, um, like the end users, are actually using water for drinking? Is that uh, something that you would have access to the information? No. To get that kind of information, we would have to survey the yeah. users of the standpipe. Because I do know in Area B and probably in Area C, in dry summers, um, people use this water to fill their wells. Right. I hear that way more than filling pools. Right. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about the price increase, but I'll, I'll okay. just leave it there. Okay. Well, and that might be something this could help us figure out down the road as well, I would assume, we would, knowing who's using the water at what time. Yeah, absolutely. We would have far better control or data data yeah. capture. Yep, agreed. Um, there is another question here from uh, Director Wells. I, I was going to suggest that with the key fob, we have a thing that questions, kind of like when you go to the garbage dump, yep. where they ask where you're from and then basically what, what kind of stuff you have, so something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's it. Sure. Um, and actually, so along with uh, these improvements, we, are, we have also uh, revised our indemnification form just um, to um, modernize it as well. So we've worked with outside legal counsel. It, there's, I wouldn't say there's any really significant changes, but it does. it is definitely an improvement. Um, <clears throat> I think, that, you know, that could be the that type of form, uh, you know, when we when people uh, sign up for a FOB, we could ask them what type of user they are, and get that information up front, um, and then that would help us to to sort uh, the data that we get through the point of sale. Um, so here's a, just a summary of the of the financial snapshot. So um, 
the the improvements come along with a with a price tag of uh, approximately one hundred twenty thousand dollars, and so these this is a summary of the annual costs that add up to that increase in 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 rates that's required. So, um, the uh, annual administration fee, annual O and M of that infrastructure, uh, the capital repayments. What we've assumed here is that if the if the water committee supports the this motion, the amendment of the a budget to include that $120,000, then, then effectively this kind of subservice, uh, the bulk water service would um, pay back. So that would be funded out of the 300 reserves, and then it would be paid back over the life of that debt. Um, so that's what that $9,300 line item is: is is um, is that annual payment over the 20 years to repay the 300 reserve. Um, and then the ten thousand dollars is a contribution to the liability reserve fund. So we have a, a future expenditures and reserve fund that's um, structured to handle liabilities or, or court cases for the service. So this that line would pay into that on an annual basis, um, just to strengthen the fund in the event in the unlikely event that um, that the service is the um, target of a, of a of a court case in the future relating to sale of bulk water from the station. Um, and that light item, sorry, sorry to bring it up, but it's yeah. it, it's um, almost half, or I guess it's uh, whatever that is. It's it quite is, a bit, is what I'm saying. It is, yeah. I think we we've um, you know we've we we, we want to make sure the service is, is covered. I think we the new infrastructure has has um, the highest level of, of protection, um, and the indemnification form will provide significant insulation, but um, it's. It's 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 possible. It's within the realm of possibility that um, that there could be some claim that would filter through to the regional district. Um, we we don't expect that to happen, but we think it's prudent to um, to protect the service with this contribution. Okay, and there is a question here from Director Wells. Yeah, I, I guess you know, g given the historical uh, experience we've had with mm -hmm. with legal cases. Um, uh, and I'm I'm just guessing here, but ten thousand dollars is probably, um, uh, and again, this is an annual thing. But like ten thousand dollars doesn't really cover a whole lot, I don't think. Um, especially if you have somebody coming here, even if it doesn't go to trial, I think ten thousand dollars is is probably light. So uh, my question is, how much do we have in the fund already, or is this sort of the start of of a fund? Uh, so there is an existing fund. Um, it's it's more of a, a general. Future expenditures and reserve fund. Um, so I don't know the exact dollar value. I think it's on the order of yeah, the future expenditure reserve fund for 300. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, through the chair to the director. So right now, in the future expenditure reserve for the 300 service, uh, as of the end of 2018, we had about $3 million, and then we're contributing or we have budgeted to contribute about 100000 a year to that reserve. Okay. And and uh, it's general. So even if uh, something happened with with this particular um, uh, standpipe. standpipe, we'd actually be able to use, because it's general, we could, we could still access that larger amount? Yeah. L most of the future expenditures of reserves are set up to deal with any potential liability issues. That's mm -hmm. really a big driver of those reserves. Yeah. Um, you know, the uptake on that has you know been sporadic, certainly, but yeah. that's really there just to kind of provide that protection. Oh, fair enough. Thanks so much for the clarity. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Well, and we <coughs> generated another question from Director Hamir. Right, thank you. Um, you know, so overall, I, I really support the idea of moving to some kind of system where we're tracking the users um, because I've watched, you know, being at the farmer's market every Saturday, I've watched the haulers come in and, and I've seen, you know, the pipe go in and water gushing out of the top of the haulers thing. And, you know, I think there's a lot of wastage that happens. And I read that only 70% of the actual water is actually being paid for. So there's, I think, a lot of efficiencies that can happen. So it's it's great. My only concern is this: the increase in the price of the water. Um, I'm wondering if 
before we make this decision, we can talk to the haulers about what it would mean for costs for the end users. Because like I said, many people in the rural areas rely on this water in the summer months. It's their drinking water. And if we're increasing prices almost by three times, what I, I don't want the end user to have to pay three times as much water. Because um, I think we'll get a lot of very, very upset people. This is drinking water. And Director Romero, these yeah. are valid points. Um, I was just going to say uh, maybe better argument for at the end of the presentation, sure. if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, that is... Oh, was that the end of the presentation? The end, yeah. <laughs> Director Hamir, I was there. Do you have anything to add to right. the conversation? So you broke my stride. Uh, well, so it, so I guess a is is there time or is there ability to do that consultation with haulers to estimate what the end cost would be for a tank of water? Because I think it runs now around one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, so I can I can definitely speak to that. Yeah. We've we've um, we've recently worked closely with the haulers. Um, in an effort to resolve the um, uh, kind of failure of the bulk water source on Denman. So we were looking closely at the cost of bringing water from town there. So, so just to put it in perspective, the, I mean, the typical um, tanker truck is about four or five cubic meters. Yeah. Um, and as you say, in town, the delivery cost is around 150. So of that 150 at the current rate, you know, it's, it's about... 7% of the costs of that truckload of water. So by by tripling the cost, so okay. for for a four for say for a 5 cubic meter truck, the costs of filling it are going from about $7 to um, close to to 20. Okay. But that's still a pretty t small it's a, a relatively small fraction of okay. the total hauling costs. I mean the hauling costs are by far the the bigger component so we have a good handle on what the what the costs are we, we do think it's a although when you look at it a percentage basis it's a three times you know 300 percent increase in cost it is such a small portion of it that that um, we don't feel it's going to cause much pain um, and in terms of the the question is whether we have time um, we um, I mean I guess um, these improvements will not be in place before the end of the summer and before the, 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 the big demand on the but the bulk water kind of ends for the year. So if that was the um, the direction from the water committee, we could we could fit that in before next summer when right. the, the system is used. I mean we are we are definitely um, keen to get this system upgraded and to move away from that um, honor system. Um, but we have implemented a temporary measure to fully protect the city distribution system from um, from the, 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 the haulers. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, it's good to hear that um, the water cost is, is a, such a small percentage. So um, that sort of allays the majority of my fears there. I'm wondering, though, if that information, when we do, when it comes to next year, and is there a communication plan around what, how this, this might roll out in case we do get suddenly haulers really jacking up their prices. But, you know, if we can have that information that water only makes up this percentage of their fee, um, just something for the CVRD to kind of shield ourselves from blowback if, if it happens. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a great suggestion. Thank you, Director. And Director Grant? I'm just wondering along those same lines, how many times, you know, if you run, if you're well ran out, how many times a summer do you have to fill it? I, I have no idea. Yeah. Like, does that last a day, a week, a month, a year? I don't know. Do you have some insight in that, Director Mayor? Well, I know one of my neighbors who ran out, and this was 2015 when we had a really dry air, he filled up his um, well 13 times. Okay. So it can be substantial. Yeah. Is that just for home use? or was, yeah, yeah, just home use. Teenagers. <laughs> it's a true cost in life. <laughs> Anything else for your presentation? Nope, just uh, that, that was it for the presentation. Okay, Over well, time. thanks very much. Um, did we move that? We did. All those in favor of receipt? And would someone like to move the recommendation one? Remover, we have a seconder. Any comments? I see Director Arbor. He wants to read it. You want to read it? 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We're supposed to. Why don't you read it? Actually, I'll read it up for us. It says that uh, the 2019-2023 financial plan, plan and capital expenditures, expenditures program for the uh, water supply system service 300 be amended to increase water expenses in 2019 by 121,000 for the upgrade to the bulk water standpipe on headquarters road and to be funded from capital works reserve 838 and it's moved and seconded any comments or questions i don't see any all those in favor and that's unanimous and recommendation two uh direct i'll give you the mic <laughs> i'll move that uh, uh other other than local government bulk water rate as outlined within schedule a bylaw number 190 be the comox valley water supply bulk water rates bylaw number 190 2011 be amended from a dollar 42 per cubic meter to 391 per cubic meter to reflect capital operating and administration costs associated with this uh, operation of the standpipe thank you and comments or questions i don't see any all those in favor it's unanimous, so we will move. That's actually it. Thanks very much. Can we move termination? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, the consumption report. Thanks. Are there any questions or thoughts on the consumption report? We do have a few minutes. I noticed that our um, unaccounted water is way down. That's probably due to the pipe we fixed, so that was kind of cool to see. Um, all those in favor of receipt? That's unanimous. And for termination? All in favor? Thanks very much.